Hey, what's up guys? My name's Captain Steve. You're watching another Deadliest Cast Fishing video. Uh, I'm working on some halibut video right now, so, but uh, before I get into even posting those, um, we've noticed we've had some people with some basic questions on how to use these, these trolling leaders that I make. Um, I did a video on this last year, and kind of walks you through the whole, you know, the whole, the whole thing. Um, but let's just kind of touch base on it a little bit more. People are asking simple questions like, where does the weight go? Um, how do you attach the weight? Okay, so I'm gonna unravel one of these. This one I just made. This is one of the, I guess, I don't know. I'm gonna make a couple of these. You can see the this line's kind of different color. It's a camo line and I have it up to 80 pounds. Now that we're getting bigger fish in the, in the system here. And uh, you guys all know, this is where the bait goes, obviously. Okay, that is, is a trap rig. This green line here is what, you know, what's keeping this from sliding, you know, it's allowing you to slide up and down the, I don't wanna hook myself here, but it'll allow you to slide it up and down like that to adjust your bait accordingly. This is gonna go in the tail or in the mid body of the anchovy or herring. This is gonna go to the bottom lip, out to the middle of the, of the nose area on your herring or your anchovy. Uh, once that's on there, I'll show you a little clip here from one of the videos I'm working on. You get these little rubber bands here. You secure one of those around the actual, actual treble hook so that bait doesn't fall off. It doesn't, you know, just fall apart easy when they hit it. So let me just unravel this a little more. You guys can see. They're usually pretty tied up, you know, throw bands and whatnot. Let me just undo this. Okay. So on, make sure I don't get cut. And I put them in these because it's really hard to like transport these things, you know? All right, so you got your flasher here. Okay. This is gonna, you know, just obviously makes a flash and creates a tension. One of the things I do too, that will help you guys, put your thumbs in the middle of that and just put a slight little bend like that. Now you're gonna have a nice, really tight wobble, a little more action, so those ball bearings can work in there. And then, uh, let's see what we got here. We come down to our, our wiggle hoochie, okay? Yeah, different colors, you know, you wanna fish some dirtier water, some murkier water. Obviously, you want to use the brighter colors, okay? There's some pinks, there's some greens going around, chartreuse and all that. And then it connects to another section here, which is your trap rig, okay? Um, so pretty much, in the front part of this, I'm trying really hard not to get hooked here. This thing is long. The front part of your leader, okay? There's another little section here. It's got your three-way, okay? What I simply did here is, I simply made, which is very easy to, to make. It's really hard to work with this. I should've done this in the boat. Anyhow, there's a short little leader, okay? About 12, 14 inches or so. Got, you know, any kind of knot, a palomar knot, any, whatever knot you can tie, just put a little snap on there. I did a little, just, simple little loop knot, you know? Okay, on that end, you're gonna put one in, obviously your sinker, okay? Like that, okay? And all that does is, if you're trolling, this thing's in the bottom, if you snag something, this is like 20 pound test. What is this, though? it is 20 pound test. It's a, uh, yeah, 20 pound CXX, okay? Some P-line stuff. If you do, if you do happen to snag, this is gonna break. The idea is this is gonna break before you lose your whole your whole setup. Okay. All right. So then you're gonna get that end, and you're gonna attach it to that three-way, just like that. Okay. The other end is gonna go up to your main line, and you really want to use a really good snap swivel don't use some cheap stuff because you get a big fish it's gonna hurt you lose it i got these from pitbull they're solid they're heavy as hell strong you can tell they're kind of 
have to close and that's what that's gonna do okay so your weights in the bottom this thing's all in the back just trolling it and uh, that's pretty simple okay um let me try to put this away here one of the other common questions is how fast you troll okay and that will vary depending on where you're at how deep you're at uh how deep you are uh, i generally say 1.8 to 2.5 that's what i do 2.5 seems to work really well for me if you're having trouble getting that speed you know if you're obviously working against the current um, let's say outgoing tide you're working against it um, you should be able to keep the speed uh, depending on your boat every boat's different so but uh, when you go when you're going with the tide now that's a different thing okay you're going with the tide I'll put this away real quick I'll cook myself you guys want to see these I'm going to be in Santa Cruz at the West Marine, I believe, on the 27th, to Sunday. They're having an event there. I'll have some of these in person. If you're from that area, you guys can pick them up, you know? So, I'll put this away before I kill myself. So, if you're going with the tide, obviously, you're, you're probably just barely in gear and idle. You're going to go a lot faster. You can use a drift sock. That's what I normally do or a bucket, you tie a bucket, you tie it to one of the cleats in the back of the boat, it should slow you down enough. Uh, like I said, every boat's different. Some, some of you guys are gonna have outboards, one outboard, two outboards, inboard, outboard. Um, you're gonna have to play with it until you figure that out, you know? Um, also, you wanna choose your colors um, for your, your leaders, depending on the water clarity. I like to fish clear, clean water. There's times where I work a little deeper water and it's a little, a little murkier but there is fish in there obviously go for the brighter colors um you know if you're, you have a certain color you want like i said i have the pinks that you know, most of these things glow anyways chartreuse there's all white the whites work really well um i'll put a list of them on there anyways um i don't know how many more i'm going to make for this season because it's, it's just really time consuming it's it hurts my hands but i want to see you guys catch some fish what's up you know i, I know you guys are you guys are buying them you know you get you don't want to you don't want to burn the spot by showing your background that's cool but show me a picture of that fish on the deck let me see something you know um i've had a few pictures but i want to see some pictures you know and um we definitely want to see them on tackle swap so let's see some pictures um we'll get you guys something you know maybe do a photo contest or something um but anyhow but uh yeah the rest of the stuff you guys can find you know in the video that i i made last year um I'll put the link in there so you guys can go ahead and click on that. It'll be right down here somewhere in the little bottom left or right of the screen. You can, you can click on that and you can watch a full tutorial on how this thing works. Um, if you still have some issues and you know, you're know you not understanding it, the best thing to do is just, just hop on the boat with me. Go ahead and book a trip. Pick my brain all day. You can watch what I'm doing. Um, and you can see these things in, in action. As you've seen, we just, we just put in limits of the day for three of us um we tried other 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 types of leaders um some people told me to just go ahead and try straight bait um so i kind of i was wondering should i try it let's, you know let's see what happens we put two rods out with just straight bait straight leaders no flash or no hoochie no nothing those rods got like one or two shakers within four hours the one rod that I had, had, had a, one of the customers, Reese was on there. Um, he had one of my leaders on there. He was getting, he got his limit, I don't know, within the first hour or so, pretty quick. Um, so I was like, all right, well, straight bait isn't really doing much. The water was clear, it wasn't dirty, so it's not like we needed the extra flash or anything, but we just weren't touching it. They weren't touching the other stuff. Um, we were getting hit, hit multiple times on just the hoochie. They are hanging on the hoochie, you know, just, you guys can tell there's a hook on there. Um, they're just hitting the hoochie. They're just, just striking it. Who knows? That's why I put it on there because years ago, I was noticing that these skirts, these hoochies would come back and they're like missing. There are teeth marks in the bill. And I'm like, man, these, these damn things are eating, eating the hoochie. So we started putting hooks on them and the fish started hanging. Um, eventually, we swapped all the rods out for 
all all my leaders and that's where it got fun um it was like every time we'd make a pass or a spot that we had caught fish it was one rod two rods three rods going off um that was the point we ran through eight or nine different trays we went through anchovies you know i, I was thinking anchovies is what they're biting we used up all the chovies went to some trade herring that i got from um a Glen at Big Red, uh, and then you and our, our local herring. So uh, one thing I noticed, the anchovies are gonna get you a bit more, um, a lot of shakers. You will get some keepers, the trade herring, little bigger ones, I think like the red label or whatever. Um, those are really good too. They're tough, they hold their shape, they don't fall apart as easy as like the anchovies. But the local bay herring that we all had from the spawns, that stuff gets bit and when they bite that it's the big ones you know you'll see some pictures right right on the bottom of the screen uh my 35 pounder has been on that my 30 pounder has been on on local herring um the first one i caught on on this leader back what seven years ago on on what do you call it a uh, soul man's boat john franklin up in san paulo bay that was 28 pounds you know uh yeah they like it so you may be far in between your bites with the big herring, but I guarantee you, use that big herring. When something hits it, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a big ass fish, uh, plain and simple. Um, I know you guys want to see you know your limits early, but me, I've caught a bunch of these already. I'd rather put that one big bait out and get that one big ass fish. You know, um, trying to break that you know that 30 range and get into the 40s and 50s uh i know it'll happen and uh you guys can make it happen too um just try it out you know but uh yeah you know hope this helps you guys a little bit i'm gonna keep working on some editing for this next upcoming halibut video um and yeah like i said we'll be at the west marine in santa cruz on the 27th of this month there's a you know little parking lot little event going on there i believe it's from nine to six so if you guys are in town or want to make the run over there just come by and say what's up um in the meantime yeah hope you guys you, you know are having a good time you guys are catching fish let me see some pictures come on i know this stuff works i've tested it you know um and like i said now that we're getting into bigger fish just, just let us know you want some heavier line i i can make them you know i have 80 pound liter 100 whatever uh my 35 pounder when I caught that, it was on 80 pound liter, okay? Uh, just let me know. Um, but yeah, I'll be making a few more of these for tackle swap and you guys get them all you can. Uh, I just loaded up on all this stuff. We got all new flashers and a crap load of hoochies ready to go. Um, these are all Maruto hooks. They're super sharp. This is what I got in my finger a few years ago. And trust me, it is not fun. So just just be careful. These things hurt. They're sh they're almost deadly sharp. Um, and yeah, that should help you guys a bit. Like I said, if you have any further questions, I'm gonna leave a link to that other video. You guys can watch it. And uh, if you want to learn some more, hop on the boat with me on the Barbarossa. I'll be glad to walk you through how all this works, so you guys can catch more fish. Um, but like I said. Just send me some pictures. I want to see it, you know? Anyhow, we're out of here. Um, I'll put a few little little clips here from what's been going on. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the water. And uh, we'll have a new video next Friday. Um, hopefully on all this halibut stuff. I got some trips booked up. It's uh, starting to get busy for me. So anyhow, um, we'll see you guys there. Don't forget, West Marine, the 27th, 9 to 6 in Santa Cruz. I'll be there. You guys can pick my brain there too. I'll have a bunch of these things for sale. Um, and uh, we'll see you there. All right, guys. Um, also, one more thing before you guys go. How much weight you use, okay? On a boat, I troll up to like 25 feet with a one pound sinker. And this isn't it, but this, I'm just showing you. That's 16 ounces, okay? You guys in the kayak, you know, you obviously don't need that heavy weight. You can go smaller, go, you know, eight, 10, whatever. Whatever gets you to the bottom and keeps you there consistently, okay? And also, one of the big thing is one of the, one of the big things is use the right kind of rod. That rod's too stiff, um, too heavy. 
it's not bending enough, it's not gonna help. We proved that, me and Flash went out and he had a, he had a way softer rod than I was using. I got a variety of rods from Okuma. Um, I was trying some new rods out and it was a little bit heavy. The Monterey, the medium heavy um, 801, that's a good rod, it works. Um, I went down a step to the medium plus and I was getting bit a little more. Does it make a difference? A little bit, depends on what side of the boat. I think it does. Um, obviously the one, the rods in the back of the boat, they're gonna get hit regardless. But on the sides, you wanna have that nice, I, I can't show you, but nice parabolic bend to the rod. Um, as you'll see in some of these pictures I'll put up and that's gonna help you a lot. If you go deeper than 25 feet or so and it's, there's a little more current, you can step it up to a pound and a half. Um, I've tried these in San Diego and way deeper. I was with my boy Tommy and uh, I think we were 50, 60 feet and I was damn near using like two pounds. Um, and I caught fish. So anyhow, like I said, watch the other video. I'm gonna leave the, all the links here for all that other stuff. Um, you guys can check it out. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start making these shortly here. It'll be 25 more to go on Tackle Swap. Go ahead and pre-order them. And then, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the water. And uh, let's see some pictures. All right, we're out of here. See you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, we're out of here. Let's get some fish.